This is Twit. Was were Arneson and Gygax designing for kids? Who were they designing they, for? They were initially designing for other war gamers, which okay. really at the time when they first started the game together, it was mostly uh, people who were college age and older. A lot of them were, were older. There was a lot of vets. People had come out of the Second World War, uh, came back to the U.S. and got involved in these historical miniatures battles. But over time, when the game broke, uh, in, in the early 80s, it's, it, it bled out of uh, the wargaming communities and became huge. It was in toy stores. Kids had their hands on it everywhere. And at that point, D&D was very, very definitely being designed for a mass audience right. and for kids quite often. I remember very well going into comic book stores and there'd be a room in the back and you kind of peer through the door and there'd be all these guys sitting around a table and, and they'd go, oh yeah, they're playing D&D. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was very, when it got, when it took off, it became very very uh, popular and that was that was about when early 80s 10 years later yeah well the key moment was in late 1979 this game so it was really at that point is just on college campuses and what happened there was a a kid who was really like uh, he was a, he was literally a he was a genius he graduated from high school at 16 and went straight off to college um, but as often happens with kids like that he was kind of alienated he didn't have a ton of friends and when he got to college he started to make some friends among the college students who played Dungeons and Dragons. Then what happened with him is he unfortunately suffered a bout of depression. He ran away from school. And when that happened, his parents and the school administration went to his dorm room to try and figure out, well, what happened to this kid? And all they found were these weird game yeah. books that had pictures of demons and dragons on them. So that was the story that they went to the press with of, uh-oh, I remember game. that. It was associated mm -hmm. with Satanism, exactly. with suicide. It was... It, people thought that kids were fleeing reality playing this yeah. game and ending up going crazy. Because mm -hmm. no one had ever seen a game like this before. And if, that sad? If, you, if it was brand new to you, you pick it up and there's right. like, this, there's a list of spells here and pictures right. of demons? Oh, it's, it's satanic. Right. But, but that made it national news. And you can imagine as soon as there was a national news story out there saying, hey, there is a crazy satanic game <laughs> that is so powerful to that make was, you lose your mind. That was good for it. <laughs> Everybody wanted to play the game after that. Yeah, How funny. Yeah. So, uh, describe, so uh, was this the first edition still, or had they gone to a second edition by now? Well, by that time, uh, by 1979, they were working on a new edition, but it was still the original. Still the original rules. one. Okay. Um, describe in the early days what a game might look like. I have an image uh, here. There's a playing map. People have drawn onto the playing map the dungeon. Uh, that they're in and this one has not only multi-sided dice but they've actually got figurines kind of mm -hmm. those those war game style figurines mm -hmm. were those typical is this a fairly typical looking setup that's that's a fairly common setup but a lot of those early games would look unfamiliar to today's gamers um when gary gygax ran his games and he did frequently i mean he played the game and ran it for people all the time he was a time. dungeon master he was a dungeon master um and when he would run the game he would he had people come into his basement. He would sit at his desk, and he had a filing cabinet next to him, and he would pull all the drawers out so he could hide behind them. And the players would sit at a table on the other side of the room so they couldn't see him. And all they would do is they would have to listen very carefully for the sound of his voice coming oh, from behind great. the filing cabinet. Oh, that's great. So it set this weird sense of drama. And I'm, today, I mean, I, I've never sit at a game where the game where the dungeon master is not at the table, but that's the way that Gary ran it. And he also didn't use figures. He very rarely used them. Uh, he didn't draw players' maps. It was very much on the players to keep track of everything themselves, listen very carefully, and uh, and uh, run the game on their end. 